If you are not ready to die, then how can you live? Life is something that many people take for granted, especially the youth. We all can often be guilty of being oblivious to the one certainty in life, which is death. So many people's lives are spent simply going through their motions, day to day, doing what they think they should do without taking the time to truly be alive and live in the moment. Life is a shadow and a mist that passes quickly, and once it is finished, it is gone forever. We spend so much time feeling the thought of death and pushing it away, but really we should fear never beginning to live. Life is futile and should not be taken too seriously because it does not matter how many years you live, but rather how many years you live in them. It's not about conforming to the views of others. It's about being a unique, living, breathing person who can experience and feel things like no one else. It's about critically viewing the way you are living day to day while creating the extraordinary out of the ordinary. Yvonne Illich is a man guilty of many of these common mistakes of humanity. He was an unexceptional, commonplace man whose life is most simple and most ordinary and therefore most terrible. On his deathbed, he begins to realize that he never truly lived or took the path that he was supposed to follow. Instead, he lived an orderly, predictable, impersonal simulation of reality. He spent so many futile years trying to approach his ideal life, and he never was happy. He didn't realize this until it was too late to go back. All of his time was spent with his self-centered, materialistic desires and striving to be like those of high social standing. Thinking that his life is predictable and can be shaped by his own power, his life begins to proceed by a balance determined by his social superiors. He begins to choose friends based on social status, marries because this is what he thinks is the right thing to do, and his conduct is governed by the light, unauthentic relationships that give him no true satisfaction, only desire for more. He lives his entire life this way as he begins to absorb himself in his work, and he slowly isolates himself from his wife, family, friends, and the world, while also closing himself off from life itself. When he begins to fall ill, he's suddenly struck out in the face by reality that his life is ending and that death is real. He struggles with it for weeks, but death cannot be understood by logic, only acceptance. A proper view of life involves the acknowledgement of death and the appreciation of true joy. It took Yvonne his entire life to discover that social esteem does not lead to happiness. Happiness is the key to success and not vice versa, because if you love what you do, you'll be fulfilled and you'll become all that you're capable of becoming. It is what you think, feel, and do for others, and then yourself that makes life worthwhile in the end. Now the question comes about of why I'm not a 21st century manifestation of Yvonne Illich. To be truthful, I believe that I'm guilty at times of being more like him than unlike him for I'm still young and have a lot of life to experience. Honestly, there's too much Yvonne in all of us to completely live life without the influence of others, but we can still strive to do something that makes us satisfied when we die, which ultimately leads to success. Yvonne saw what he thought was an easy way to happiness, but it turned out to be success without fulfillment. He needed to first find happiness, and then success would follow. As a child, I was pretty much carefree and lived a happy life with parents, who truly cared about me and made me feel like I always had a place in life and people who understood me. However, when middle and high school came along, my life went through some major changes, and I soon began to fall into the hands of society, and some of my identity was taken from me. I began to spend so many years worrying about self-image and how others thought, what others thought of me. I became extremely shy due to my fear of living up to the expectations of others and fitting in. I did gain good skills in perseverance, responsibility, attention to detail, and hard work. However, I began to go too far with it as I let the views of my peers in society take over some of who I was. Just like Yvonne, I began to shape my life with my own power. I began to get a very distorted view of my body and the way I was seen by others, which soon began to lead to an eating disorder. Also, I began to push myself extremely hard in whatever I was involved in, not for happiness, but a hollow sense of success. Whether it was getting straight A's, taking AP courses, joining multiple clubs, playing in the band, running cross country, and doing many hours of volunteer work, I did it all, and had what appeared to be the perfect life that seen by others. But the truth is that although some of the things were enjoyable, they did not make me truly happy because I was so focused on doing the best at everything and reaching my unattainable standards. I strived to do my best at everything because I did not know who I was or where I was going. And even though I achieved a lot, I never truly believed in my abilities. Because of this, I continually push myself to do more and more, 
for the thought fulfillment and what I thought was success, which was good grades, getting into college, getting scholarships, and fitting in. But I was falling into a trap that many teens do, just like Yvonne, and was creating a false sense of reality, and was not living for myself. This situation still affects my definition of success and who I am today, but it's getting better now, and more than ever a desire to find where I truly fit in in life. I see myself as somewhat of a recovering Yvonne who's striving to find a new zest for life, as I'm beginning a new stage of life and trying to find where I fit in. I've already begun to reform my ideas of success, and now desire more than ever to balance my school life with some of the things that make me truly happy in life, such as being outdoors, doing skiing, hiking, and running. I also hope to become more of a part of an education where I simply desire to learn and not have to focus on grades any longer. I've already been criticized for being a woman in engineering, but I'm determined to follow the high goals I've set for myself, such as becoming a part of energy research and the fight to end foreign oil dependence. Choosing to come to CU and becoming an environmental engineer was one of the first major decisions in my life that I made without really any outside influence. And it is a step in the right direction of taking more control of my life. Success to me will be using the talents I've been given to the best of my ability and turning my life into a continual learning experience where I live every day to its fullest. Because life is a gift that is unpredictable. I've seen where I came from and I'm inspired to reform and look more to the future while simply being myself. After my death, true fulfillment will come from doing what makes me happy, playing the cards I hold well, and becoming all that I can be.